Wendy Williams is a former host who used to be on The View. A documentary about her has been released which has caused problems in her family. The documentary, which was supposed to show Wendy's comeback, has run into problems it wasn't expecting, like the pandemic, her husband's affair, and her mother's death. Sunny Huston, who used to be Wendy's legal eagle on her radio show, told Wendy's niece Alex Finney about what she saw in the documentary to learn more about what happened to her friend. Sunny told Wendy that she was strong and defended her family, telling her how much they loved her and wanted to be closer to her. She also said that the guardianship system worries her because Wendy's family wants to be closer to her but can't because of the law. Co-host Joy Bear asked Sunny where Wendy was, and Sunny said that Wendy's family doesn't know where she is because of the guardianship system. Alyssa Farah Griffin talked about how she felt after watching the documentary. She said she had to turn off the second episode because it made her think of her sibling's painful battle with addiction. Alyssa stayed sensitive and said she was worried about letting Wendy's darkest moments rip in public. She also asked why this had to happen. Joy joined the discussion and said that she understood how hard the documentary was to watch and how strong addiction can be for people. A major character in the documentary series, Whoopi Goldberg, agreed that the two-part documentary was hard to watch emotionally and drew attention to Wendy's complicated health problems, such as frontotemporal dementia, aphasia lymphedema, and Graves' disease. Joy wondered if it was okay for everyone to see Wendy's personal problems and why people would want to watch such a documentary in the first place. Sean Zanat, a major character in the documentary series and Williams' publicist since 2021, told NBC News in an exclusive interview that she didn't agree with the decision. She felt Williams was being used and she made it clear that she thought the focus would be on Williams' career comeback instead of showing her in a weak and confused state. According to State Zanat, the project was first brought to her attention by Creature Films and E1 Television in 2022. This is the same production company that made Wendy Williams, a lifetime documentary about Williams. Senna told Williams about the idea for the documentary, and Williams agreed right away to tell her story. However, Zenat says that the documentary that was shown did not match what was originally agreed upon, and it was different from what was planned for the documentary. People are wondering if it's moral to show someone with health problems in the Wendy Williams documentary. In a recent interview with Today.com, the documentary's creators said they didn't know about Wendy Williams' diagnosis while they were making it, even though they admitted that Williams seemed like herself some days and not others. Showrunner Erica Hansen stressed that the team was dedicated to handling a difficult and touchy story with respect and care. Williams' publicist is still not sure about this explanation because she thinks that the producers kept asking questions during the filming and sometimes purposely caught Williams looking confused to fit their story. William's publicist also says that the show wasn't really about showing Williams in the best light it was more about making a spectacle for money and ratings. Zaddy Williams' publicist said she thought the show was more about making a spectacle for money and ratings than showing Williams in the best light. She also said she didn't think the show did a good job of portraying her, especially in a scene where Williams scolds her on the couch. The newest part of the Wendy Williams documentary shows more about her recent diagnosis of dementia caused by drinking, which was made public by her 23-year-old son, Kevin Hunter Jr. Medical professionals told her that her heavy drinking was starting to make it harder for her to think clearly and for her brain to work properly. Williams's confusion is clear throughout the documentary. For example, she puts herself in Miami when she is supposed to be in California. Williams's family is worried about the court-ordered guardianship arrangement in which a professional guardian is in charge of her money. Kevin Hunter Jr. says the current guardian hasn't done enough to protect his mother, and Williams's sister Wanda Finney says she offered to be the guardian but ran into problems while denying claims of financial exploitation. In the end, the Wendy Williams documentary makes people think about the morality of showing someone with health problems and the differences between what was agreed upon and what was shown to the public. The documentary looks into Wendy Williams' complicated situation. Williams is a former reality TV star who has been having trouble with her drinking. Her manager, Will Selby, keeps telling her that any choices she makes, like moving to Florida to be with family, need to be approved by the court and guardianship. Selby Williams' manager admits that she isn't making decisions on her own and doesn't know why she made the choice she did. The film also shows a very important time in 2012, when Williams's health made people worry about her drinking. DJ Booth, 
a friend and former co-worker remembers that she was tired and lacked speed when they worked together remotely on her talk show. He doesn't believe that COVID could be causing these symptoms. Williams was taken to the hospital in May of that year, and her nephew Travis Finney talks about a scary call she got from DJ Booth, who said he was afraid for her life and thought she had a medical emergency because she was drinking too much. Williams' family and friends are really worried about her drinking, which has a big effect on her life. Selby says she regularly checks her apartment for alcohol and has found bottles hidden in odd places while she was out to dinner. Williams asks for a drink with alcohol, but Selby tells the waiter in a quiet way to bring her one without alcohol. Another thing that the documentary shows is how Williams' drinking hurt her relationship with her son. There were problems in the family after eight months had passed since she saw her last in Florida in 2021. Williams' son is worried that she is around people who have bad habits and knows that her drinking affects them. The documentary also talks about a meeting Wendy Wendy Williams has in Los Angeles with NBC Universal to talk about a possible return to TV. Although her family thinks that her health isn't stable enough for a comeback, and her niece Alex Finney thinks it's disgusting that the publicist took her to this meeting that didn't lead to a new show offer. Finally, updates on the documentary filming stopped in April 2023 because people were worried about Wendy's health. Selby paints an unsettling picture of Wendy hiding in her apartment and acting like she has given up. Wendy has clearly shut herself off in her apartment with alcohol and she seems to be okay with this as her life changes. In short, the documentary looks at Wendy Williams' complicated life, her drinking, and her family relationship. That's why the documentary shows how important it is to understand and help her on her way to recovery. According to Wendy Williams' brother Tommy Williams, she has made a lot of progress since she talked about her health problems in a recent Lifetime special. Tommy says that Wendy has gotten a lot better and that her speech, conversation topics, and dialogue have changed in clear ways. He hopes Wendy will one day speak in public and share her story of how she inspired and changed people. However, new reports suggest that there may be a link between Wendy's guardianship and campaign donations. Judge Lisa Saloff is being looked at closely because she is said to have given guardianships to people and law firms that gave money to her campaign fund from 2019 to 2022. The judge got a total of $572 in campaign donations from lawyers, law firms, or people involved in guardianship cases. In 2022, he or she gave these donors 62 guardianship appointments. Wendy Williams was diagnosed with primary progressive aphasia and frontotemporal dementia last year. Her financial accounts were frozen because of her cognitive problems, and she was put under guardianship. Her former Wells Fargo financial advisor became worried and filed a guardianship petition, which led to this action. While this was going on, she removed her son's power of attorney and named Sabrina Morris, a lawyer for the state's administration, as Williams's guardian. People are paying more attention to the scandal because of the guardianship and the alleged ties to campaign donations. Kevin Hunter Jr. is the son of Wendy Williams and her ex-husband. He was in a tough spot when he had to take care of his sick mother. He said Judge Souf told him he would be arrested if he didn't bring Wendy back to her home in Manhattan after she went to Florida to get help in 2021. The unified court system of New York State shows that Judge Souf gave Morrissey at least seven guardianships in the same year. Aha New York lawyer named Paul Madero's works as a guardianship lawyer. He gave money to Suf's campaign in 2022 and was given seven guardianship appointments that year. Madero says there is no conflict of interest because he has known the judge for 29 years. What do Wendy Williams fans think about the situation? Some have compared it to the 2020 movie I Care A Lot, which is about a guardian who takes advantage of the assets of the people she cares for in nursing homes. Fans are worried about Wendy Williams' health, and Netflix is worried about her family's safety. The documentary Whereas Wendy was released after Wendy's team announced that she has frontotemporal dementia FTD. A judge in New York has approved its airing. The film shows how important it is to report any shady activities and the hashtag hash free. Former talk show host Wendy Williams has gotten a lot of support from her fans since she told them about her diagnosis. In the messages she got, she saw the power of unity and compassion. She also thanked the Association for Front and Temporal Degeneration for their support and work to teach people about the disease. Like Bruce Willis's dementia, front and temporal dementia is a rare disease that affects parts of the brain that control language and behavior. 
She started working in radio in the late 1980s, and her show, The Wendy Williams Show, has helped her become famous since then. TV executives are interested in her sincerity and lack of remorse, which led to a test run of her syndicated talk show in 2008. Fox made deals for the show to be shown all over the country because it was especially popular with women aged 18 to 54. Some people say that Wendy's success depends on how well she does with black women and gay men, even though these groups might find her most offensive. Wendy Williams has done a lot of different kinds of entertainment besides her famous talk show. She has done stand-up comedy, actors, books, and Broadway shows. She was also on The Masked Singer, but her real name was hidden by a big mouth costume. A biopic and a documentary about her life came out in January 2020, with the latter especially popular in the fall of 2020. Wendy Williams surprised everyone on The Masked Singer by wearing a costume with a big mouth to hide who she was. Her day job was still a big deal, and her never-ending schedule made her a familiar face to anyone with cable. In her signature show, Hot Topics, she broke down celebrity rumors while a huge audience watched with bated breath. In conclusion, Wendy Williams' family and friends are still there for her during this tough time. They are hoping for her health and know how important it is to spread information about the disease.